Well, good morning. It's Randy Tebert out here in Arizona on a beautiful Sunday morning in October, October 29th. Is it 29th? October 30th. Day before Halloween, the second biggest holiday of the year, apparently. So people go all crazy out here, as I'm sure they do in your areas too, with all these decorations. And I guess the latest thing is these big inflatable things that are 8, 10, 12 feet high. People's yards, I mean, uh, I mean, they go, they go almost as uh, all out on this as they do at Christmas time. So. Anyway, it's become a big thing out here, so now the boys looking forward to it. Uh, tomorrow night being Halloween, so anyway, I have to work. You know, I thought it was a national holiday, you know, but uh, some people think it is. I've had people that work for me that took the day off just to do the Halloween festivities, so it's kind of funny to me, really. Hey, another busy week at work for me and uh, very tiring had some events this weekend and went to and that was uh, a lot of fun and uh, fun and accolades for something I've been involved in for 35 years and that was a lot of fun and very humbling and uh, the, uh, the outpouring of support and respect is, was uh, very very touching to me so we'll leave it there uh, it was a good weekend. A lot of a lot of uh, a lot of miles traveled this weekend. But I'm out on the bike today, enjoying the, the late fall or mid fall for us uh, sky. It's uh, in the winter the patterns uh, change out here some, and uh, we get these high wispy clouds that happened in the uh, fall and winter out here that just uh, look different than the summer and so it's just a nice change I really like this time of year for for out here I can really really enjoy the ride without sweating and, uh, wearing a long sleeve shirt today and it's pretty comfortable of course I get a lot of uh, weather protection from my uh, fairing on the bike now my reckless motorcycles fairing uh, just was running around yesterday looking at new bikes and I just can't leave them alone I've got to go look at all the new stuff that's around and, and uh, I was looking at some Royal Enfields yesterday and uh, and uh, those have begin uh, been getting to get a real popularity going there's a lot of them around I see now they're inexpensive and I haven't ridden one but I hear they're very entertaining even for 50 horsepower or less and uh, there's a bike called a 411 Scram, which is like a Himalayan, if you're familiar with those. Without all the extra off-road stuff, it's more of a street scrambler kind of bike. Kind of an interesting looking bike. They don't make a lot of power. It's like 26 horsepower, and uh, you definitely wouldn't want to take one on the freeway. Not for any real distance anyway, because, I mean, it's, it's, it's basically a 400cc bike with the uh, power of a 250. And so you don't have much power in the upper end if you need to pass somebody or whatever. I mean, remember years ago I had a, a Suzuki DR250 uh, street legal off-road bike. And uh, it would go 67, 68 miles an hour flat out, 8,500 RPM on the tack. Um, but you had nothing left above 50 miles an hour to pass anybody. I mean, it felt plenty powerful in the dirt and when you were riding along and doing that. But uh, if you got on the freeway, and you know, and you had to get on freeways to get out of town here in Arizona, so riding out in the desert, um, it was pretty much a white knuckle experience. Uh, you know, with the off-road tires kind of squirming and and howling on the pavement, uh, uh, and uh, realistically, uh, it just was not meant for that. That and. Uh, even if you got somebody going slow in the right lane, you just didn't have enough oomph to pass them. So I don't need anything like that anymore. So, you know, that should have been trailered, but I didn't have a truck or trailer at the time. So, and I ended up keeping that bike for a little while and sold it. It was rough when I got it and I worked on it and got her all fixed up. And, uh, 
and uh, I enjoyed doing that and working on it and getting it right and uh, it was a good little bike uh, for somebody who wanted to use it for what it was intended for I still like the idea of adventure bikes um, I don't know if it's in the cards for me right now but uh, I still think about it yesterday I was at the Triumph uh, store over out here in Mesa, Arizona, and they had a used bike. It was a, a Street Scrambler 900, which is a variant of the Bonneville, if you're not familiar with them. And it, uh, somebody had done this thing up with a lot of accessories uh, and uh, a uh, kind of an aggressive street uh, enduro tire, and uh, it looked really interesting. It had uh, looked to be straight pipes that were baffled on it. Uh, it sounded really cool. Uh, I just, uh, again, can't afford that right now. You know, like having just bought a new bike here, you know, here in the last several months. So, hey, I'm always interested in looking at what's out there. You know, this this one was done up the way I would do it. And uh, and I, I just, uh, just assumed that it was too much money for me because they're about 11,000 new and this one appeared to be within a year or so or too old so anyway it's all again it's always interesting to me to see what's out there and, uh, it seems now that uh, the bike dealers have got a lot of bikes for sale and I mean they seem to be doing better than the, the, uh, the car industry and getting their vehicles out I think the the cars and trucks probably have way too many chips and stuff in them and they're still having issues with that I heard it was getting better, but I don't know for sure. I'm not seeing full lots of uh, new vehicles on the car lots. Uh, uh, the one by my house, the Ford dealer, they don't seem to have much of anything. You know, it's just uh, they had some new ones there. I went and stopped and just to look at the trucks to see what they were cost, and every one of them had a sold tag on them. So I think they were just displaying them to make it look like they had something. You know, you have to order everything apparently. 2020 year two is going to be quite a uh, off year for the auto industry. It's going to be a rare, rare car to own, I think, or a truck, but they just didn't make that many of them, or at least there weren't that many out there. Um, now they're advertising 2023s already, and uh, I don't know whether any of those are around or not. There were some 2023 bikes at the. Uh, at the Kawasaki Triumph dealer that I was at yesterday, but they're pretty much just carryovers from the previous couple years. They don't change much. Anyway, the Arizona Canal. Just a nice morning out. It's uh, probably in the high 60s right now. Beautiful. Not much planned today except to just get out and ride around. It's, gonna, it's back to the grind again tomorrow and uh, it's going to be in one of those tough weeks at work. It seems like they all are these days. So, uh, I've got big projects going on so I want to enjoy my day while I can. I don't feel like going particularly anywhere in particular, just, just, just riding. Sometimes those are the best rides. It's a great view there at the desert. Anyway, I'm going to ride some more. Probably stop a little bit for gas for fill up and then take off again. But uh, I'll record a little bit more later. This is Randy T Bird. I'll see you in a little while. It's Randy, I'm back. Just uh, continuing my ride here on this Sunday morning out here at Arizona. A little high overcast today, not too bad. The sun peeking through here and there. Lots of bikes out this morning. This is my favorite time of year out here. It's hard to believe it's going to be November. But the uh, day after tomorrow, November. And another favorite time of my year out here, especially uh, my favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. I just love love sitting down to some turkey and some pie and 
uh, mashed potatoes, you know, all that good stuff. My wife is a tremendous cook and uh, she just makes a heck of a feast. So we're gonna lay low and enjoy that. So, so I enjoy chatting with people that I meet on the highway. They're uh, talking about motorcycles. Uh, just my life. I mean, if you want to start any kind of conversation with me anywhere, anytime, you just talk about motorcycles, we can do it for hours. It's just, uh, it's been my life. Uh, I know a lot of you, you have that same bug where you just, uh, this is everything. This is what you live for. I've been riding since 1972 and I started on dirt bikes and been through a lot of changes and having ridden back in the 70s and stuff I rode some truly awful motorcycles and been around some very entertaining motorcycles but a lot of them were really bad and you wouldn't put up with that kind of stuff these days but uh, you know it was fun at the time you know we become a little jaded we got to have the latest and greatest and best and and uh, I know myself I'm, I'm kind of that way but and I remember when just having just a bike, anything, no matter how ratty or unreliable or obnoxious it was, that was uh, that was everything. You know, when I wasn't riding it, I was just sitting there looking at it. Uh, I had an old uh, 1973 Sports Direct LCH, and it was it was really a terrible bike. But God, I love that bike. And put a lot of miles on it, a lot of uncomfortable miles. That was a really uncomfortable motorcycle, but it was my first Harley Davidson, and uh, I didn't care. I would never have admitted it back then. I would tell people it was the best thing in the world. But it was crude, and it was obnoxious, unreliable, hard to start, terrible brakes, terrible suspension. But at the time, man, it was uh, the best thing ever. I had had uh, English motorcycles and I have fond memories of them, but if I was to ride them these days I would probably wonder what the hell I was thinking. Uh, I had a, a 68, excuse me, a 69 Bonneville, and that was supposed to be one of the pinnacle years of the Bonneville, and while it was a lot, it was a, it was a fun motorcycle to ride, it, it broke down a lot. Never anything really serious, just nagging stuff is like you know they talk about the electrics on old English bikes and it was true they were they were pretty bad but you know it was another thing that I just just loved to ride they sounded great they felt right uh, the right side shifter was a bit of a thing it took some getting used to back those days but uh, when I went to bikes with the standard left side shifter was uh, seemed weird to me I had dirt bikes back in the days too at the same time so I'd go from the street bike with the right side shifter to the dirt bike with the left side shifter sometimes it took a few minutes to get reacclimated to uh, so you didn't uh, stomp on the brake instead of the shifter you know? either float the valves or lock up the rear wheel but that was fun. I mean, uh, I mean, Norton's of the day had a right side shifter with a reverse shift pattern, so you really had to be paying attention. And I have no idea how people back in the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s rode Indians with the throttle on the opposite side. That seems really weird with a hand with a hand shifter or foot clutch. Uh, I know people do it. I imagine you get used to anything, but boy, does that seem really weird to me. I remember the early uh, Harleys when they changed over to the uh, to the, the the left side shifter that was mandated by on the Sportsters was mandated by the U.S. government, DOT or whatever back then. They had this terrible arrangement where they just ran a rod across the back of the cases, and they modified the old brake arm to be a shifter, and then they hung on this contraption on the other side for the brakes that had a cable that was constantly sloppy and loose and the shift throw must have been five or six inches and they finally resolved that after a few years but that was almost like an afterthought you know oh we got to change because of the law uh, what do we do you know somebody in the janitorial department came up with that idea apparently so 
Anyway, I don't even know what brought that up. It just, I guess just thinking about motorcycles. Clouds seem to be thinking enough. Supposedly we got a weather system coming in that's going to bring our first so-called winter storm to the area. It's going to get cool and probably highs in the low 60s or something like that. And that's usually what happens this time of year. You get that first uh, November storm and it changes the weather patterns full on to Arizona winter. So clouds are, are getting thicker. Uh, there's no chance of rain today but uh, it's coming. So the cool weather will be good for the project I've got to do at work next week, so. No sweating. So. Yeah, I'm working in the warehouses out here with evaporative coolers in the hot weather is, uh, it's hard to describe how hot and miserable that is, unless I guess you live in like Atlanta or something and you have to work outside or in a warehouse. It's just very, hot, sweaty, dirty work. So. Anyway, it helps a lot when it's cool out. Just, when I was younger, I used to hike with friends and climb these mountains and stuff, and a great day to do that when it was about 50 degrees. And uh, if you were breaking a sweat at 50 degrees, you were working hard. Uh, so that's so much for today's weather report. I'm just riding and enjoying the, the view of the mountains. Hope you all are getting up to something good this weekend. And uh, for those of you who are riding seasons are starting to come to a close, uh, I'm sorry. You know, I'll try to keep you entertained out here. At any rate, just riding. Anyway, I'd like to welcome uh, my two latest subscribers, uh, um, Wes and Melly. Welcome to my channel. I hope you enjoy it. And I uh, wish you all the luck in the world with your new uh, studio down there. And I uh, hope to get by to see you guys soon. Uh, my wife mentioned that she uh, had stopped by and visited. And uh, uh, I will uh, be happy to, uh, to come by and check out your shop. And uh, I always enjoy talking to you too. And I, and I wish you all the best. Anyway, so much for shout outs today. God, I love that view. Anyway, this is Randy T-Bird out here in Fall, Arizona. Enjoying the, enjoying the ride. I want to thank you all for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. It's very easy. It costs you nothing. One of the few things in this, left in this world where you can get for nothing. So I do all the work and you get to enjoy. How's that? Sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Anyway, this is Randy Tiber out here in Arizona, and we'll talk to you later.